At this point, Ming owns everyone, including, yes, somehow, Savoy. How in the hell did this happen? So this has got to be one of the most famous alternative history questions out there. What would have happened if there were no Americas? How would European colonization change, as well as what would the world do without the greatest country on Earth? Yeah, that's right, Canada. So here's the map of 1492 with a completely natural line just going straight down it. So what exactly are countries like Portugal, Castile, France, and England gonna do without, uh, you know, land to steal away from native people? Well, actually, that's not correct. They'll definitely still be able to do that. Oh, and by the way, don't mind this Red Sea of Death down here. Just pretend like it's the blood of the Native Americans we had to kill to get this mod to work. All right, seriously though, Australia, New Zealand, and uh, you know, these Pacific Islands are all open. I'm guessing there's gonna be a, a bigger race for this whole area. And I don't exactly know how this is gonna affect Siberia, as well as of course, Eastern Asia, like Japan being the big one. Will the Europeans just decide to attack more people in Asia instead? And by the way, for anybody wondering, we've started at this date because this is the beginning of the age of colonization. And by the end of this video, we're gonna see what the world looks like in 1821. You know, one theory I haven't considered is maybe we're just gonna see a ton more wars on this continent as a whole. I mean, I can understand that. These European countries are probably gonna be super bored without North and South America here. And that's usually where they gain most of their power. So will we see someone in Asia like Ming just stay on top for the rest of this timeline? At the moment, they are pretty easily in first place, then the Ottomans in second, and France in third. Actually, mostly Europeans lead out the top eight for now. I usually feel so horrible doing AI-only battles and barely looking at North and South America, but now I don't have to feel bad anymore. I guess Timmy's already blown up, and uh, he's gonna blow up even harder very soon. And we are beginning to see some of the first colonization from the Europeans. Oh shit, Portugal's already in South Africa. How did I miss that? Aw, oh, Yao, you don't look so good. Maybe you should go out and get a little bit of air. Of course, Austria is the emperor at the moment, and uh, we'll kind of have to see how long that lasts. Now, I'm not sure if this start date just kind of began with this, but uh, Aragon is ruled by Castile in a big old sweet personal union. But Naples is now independent, so will we see an early Italy at some point? Holy shit, what is going on? Poland, Lithuania, get... Get it together! Yeah, the Ottomans are just going fucking nuts right now. Ming is going after those damn Mongolians. Maybe they won't even need to build a shitty wall. Holy crap, yeah, that's what it's looking like. Although the whole great Mongol invasion has already happened, hasn't it? England is now at war with Castile, and uh, damn, they made a landing too. Yeah, you best uh, prepare your anus. You know, now that I think about it, is this just gonna be a competition to see how many Europeans can ship more prisoners to Australia. And there we go. We have our first Europeans colonizing things that they probably shouldn't at this time. Oh, but Portugal's over here doing their thing too, though. You know, I don't think there's gonna be much land left by the time France and England are ready to colonize. Oh, and I just noticed Austria has control over this region. Denmark only has their personal union with Norway, obviously, and uh, Sweden is kicking ass right now. I'm sure their alliance with Muscovy is definitely helping them out quite a bit. And here goes Castile stealing away lands from the Congo. And there's probably gonna be much more where that came from. So here we are just before the 1600s, and obviously shit looks pretty different in Europe. Great Britain has formed, and France is going beast mode on northern Iberia. Aragon gained their independence, and uh, Castile might not be a colonial powerhouse anymore. Russia's also alive, but uh, they seem to be having an Ottoman problem to the south of them. Naturally, Ming is still looking absolutely terrifying. I guess I should have expected this. Ming is still super broken, isn't it? And wow, I'm kind of surprised. France has come out on top for the only open continent. I almost missed this one, but uh, Savoy has control over the Solomon Islands. Now that's some shit you've probably never seen before. Great Britain is doing okay, but they have a lot of catching up to do. Japan, I think for the most part, is being left alone, but I'm wondering how many people have rivaled Ming. Oh shit, nobody, nobody at all. Wait, how, how does that work? And what the hell is going on here? God damn. Oh, well most of these are just military access, but uh, still, this is kind of ridiculous. I should have mentioned I haven't actually played EU4 in a really long time, so as of right now, I kind of don't know shit about this game. But I will say, back in the day, I used to be okay. Alright, surprisingly enough, I know I seem like an idiot, but I did have an old Let's Play series where I played as the Mayans, and uh, I actually, like, dominated North America. It was the most shocking thing because people found out I was moderately competent. Well, Sweden is dead. Sorry, Paradox. You didn't make them OP enough, I guess. Wow, a surge of prisoners from France must have just arrived at the colony. And Russia is continuing to get its face bashed in by the Ottoman Empire. Damn, Pope! Slow down, son! He's laying down that religious whoop-ass on everybody. Oh, but he better be careful. Now, at the moment, it looks like Ming has taken quite a dip here in fourth place. The Ottomans, France, and Russia lead out the top three. The Iberians have lost most of their colonies in Africa, I'm guessing due to 
the conflicts at home. It's about 30 years later, and uh, I don't know what the fuck is going on. This doesn't make any sense because this region isn't impacted at all, whether there's a new world or not. This is just the Ottomans bitch slapping Russia real hard. Savoy just got themselves a piece of the pie. Good for them. But um, they've got a lot of colonizing to do if they want to catch up to France. Damn, they already have a hold of New Zealand as well. Portugal has some rebels on some random islands. I'm actually surprised Portugal's even still around at this point. Oh yeah, now that I mention it, um, I don't really know if they are. Oh, okay, false alarm. They're, they're fine. They're, they're looking good. I want to know how little ass Savoy is doing so well. I mean, they're not having like a great game at least in their home continent. They are allied to the most badass dude in the Italian peninsula, so I'm sure he's helping. Damn, what a bunch of dicks. Look at the Ottomans just warn everyone around them. They're just telling everyone not to do, whoa, what the hell's going on here? Mongolia has like a Siamese twin or something. There's definitely some, oh wait, never mind. India is also starting to consolidate with only like, I don't know, five or six major powers here. Hey, I know the Cham Empire, I've played Civilization 5 mods before. So Portugal owns the Philippines in this uh, weird universe. Or wait, no, I thought that was a colony. This is uh, Sulu, who is a tributary state of Ming. Of course they are. At this point, Ming owns everyone, including, yes, somehow, Savoy. How in the hell did this happen? Well, anyways, this is more of a great powers that I expected by this time in the video. Ottomans number one, Ming number two. I am shocked to see France doing so well. But then again, I am extremely used to Hoi 4, where France's special ability is surrendering. Oh, I don't know why I haven't checked on the HRE, but uh, Bohemia has become pretty damn powerful. Uh, yeah, when and how did that happen? Well, regardless, let's see if they can hold on to it and do any cool shit. Wow, Aragon. What a bunch of traitors. How could you ally yourself to the evil Ottomans? The Pope and Fulu are now allied to France, so that's interesting. And they're of course rivaled to Ming, Great Britain, and Austria. Which I don't know why, because uh, Austria ain't big shit anymore. They do still have all this territory up here though. Japan is still yet to unify, which I, I don't even know if that's normal or not, but it is 1728. And it's hard to say, but I guess we can confirm the Europeans don't care about Eastern Asia. That's kind of weird, but at the same time, Ming is just an absolute heavyweight at the moment. It is also the Age of Revolution, so I'm really hoping we'll see a Napoleon figure rise up at some point. In terms of religion, things look uh, about the same, I guess. I mean, I didn't realize how big of a deal this would be until now, but without North and South America, Catholicism and Protestantism is kind of screwed. Holy shit, you guys have been asking me for an Islamic world in Hearts of Iron 4. I think you might just get that in EU4 extremely soon. Okay, and here we are in 1821, and holy crap, I don't know what I expected. It definitely wasn't this though, but at the same time, maybe I should have. Without North or South America, how would the Europeans get more power? I mean, yeah, I'm sure this land is super developed, but uh, that is not going to be enough. Ming is still going crazy, and uh, they're now at war with Conch. They also still have Savoy as a tributary state in Europe, which is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. By the end of the timeline, France ended up still getting second place somehow. Ottomans obviously first, and Ming is third. Koch here grabbed fifth, which is the only other non-European, but I don't know how long that whole thing is gonna last. And finally, in terms of colonization, uh, France is like the dominant power. There has just been some Europeans colonizing these Pacific Islands, um, but that's about it. Ming grabbed Eastern Siberia, so there was no chance for someone like Great Britain to come out here and try anything. Religiously, Protestantism has decreased, but that doesn't really matter since uh, Sunni and Shia are just dominating most of this world. I'm guessing most of this land is just going to be slowly converted one by one. Orthodox probably won't make it past the 19th century. The HRE has basically just become Bohemia. I mean, there's a few countries left, but it's just Bohemia now. The Pope actually made it through this entire game controlling all of the Italian peninsula, which is like the best I've ever seen them do, I think. Oh, I'm sorry for not talking about French Africa. Holy crap. Yeah, this might be way more powerful than everything they have in Australia. Basically on a map without the New Worlds, there's only enough room for one colonial European power. And in this case, it was definitely France. So that's why I think they're one of the world's greatest powers still. Even though these countries are in different technology groups, it seems like everyone is on top of it. For the most part, there isn't a severe technology logical advantage from the Westerners. Oh shit, I didn't even look at trade. Oh my god, I am an idiot. Uh, that's pretty cool that the mod actually thought about this stuff. Basically, two big nodes go through the Siberian part of the world to the North Sea. There's just one node that goes through Africa and then does a little curve or something back towards Europe. This is actually kind of confusing because I know I've referred to this ocean as the Atlantic and the Pacific, but what would this actually be called? 
Pan Atlantic. Beijing, though, obviously is the biggest trade node in the game. It's 1842 Japan. Why haven't you formed yet? Were Europeans actually getting involved and I wasn't noticing? So there you have it. A world without the Americas means uh, the Ottomans just rule the entire planet. Well, that was a weird one. I guess that should have been completely obvious to everyone that something like that would play out, but for some reason, that never kind of crossed my mind. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. And of course, big thanks to Johan, Elfie, DestinyFucker9000, Michael Ghazi, Jane Copeland, Wyon, Spatial Winter W, Kirby, and Furry Cruz for being my crack daddies. If you want to support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description down below. Thank you so much for helping, crack boy.